All right, so let me try to demonstrate to you a little bit about eSword to familiarize uh, those of you who haven't ever used it before. When you first get eSword and install it, uh, it comes up with a screen that looks something like this. Uh, Yep. yep. You can go to the website and download it, or if, if you feel generous, you, he has a button there where you can donate. If you down, donate, I think, at least $20 to him to help with the, the further development of this, he will, <clears throat> he will mail you a CD that has it on it. Okay. So you can get it either of those two ways. And uh, you install it, and it comes up, and you have a window or on, it looks like this, and actually I'm using windows two different ways. The whole thing is a window, and yet each one of these is a window. Let me point out a few things to you. Uh, this is the Bible window. And when you first install it, you probably will only have like one translation, and that'll be the King James Version uh, that will be there. Uh, a number of these other translations are available free to install within it. But uh, so far, that's... But I'm just telling you, down here is your dictionary window. This is where Bible dictionaries are found. And again, maybe only one or two dictionaries will install by default when you first put it in. Over on the top right is your commentary window. And in your bottom right is what he calls his editors. This is a kind of word processor that is linked in to the rest of the program. So, for example, if, if like over here I've got John... 1323 that I'm at right now. If I wanted to record some notes that I'm making about John 1323, I can type those into this window over here. And every time I come back to John 1323, it'll show me my notes. And I can do that for every single verse in the whole Bible if I want to. But beyond just making notes on individual passages, I can switch from my study notes over to topic notes and I can just entitle it baptism or whatever and type or write my own notes in there about baptism, can insert scriptures from this window, cut and paste articles out of the dictionary over into it and even things out of commentaries into it and, and it will save that. Then every time I want to see my notes on baptism, I just come back to my notes and I can either scroll through all my note by title or I can just search for it and it'll pull it up. And, uh, but you have the four windows uh, that you see there by default. This is just the default screen. It's very customizable. I don't like the screen like that. Now, realize I've got this at a pretty low resolution. Most of the time when I'm using my eSword, I'm using it on either my desktop with a great big monitor or even my laptop. Uh, that has a much higher resolution, larger screen than this. Uh, and this one is sort of shrunk down to fit our projector. But you can rearrange this as you like, as many times as you want. For example, I don't use the editor all the time, and so I usually keep it hidden. And I do that by simply coming to the top right corner of it and uh, clicking on it, and it goes away. Now, it doesn't go very far. It's just over here on the left head edge, and if I click on it, it'll come back again. It just sort of hides it. I also like to have the scriptures more prominent, so I often will grab my dictionary and just grab it and slide it over here and drop it there. And this is usually how I work in eSword. Now, there's times I don't need the uh, dictionaries, and so I can hide them as well. And so then I have just two two windows, Bible and commentaries, if that's what I'm working in as I'm doing my study and so forth. But So it's a, a very customizable, very easy uh, to... Uh, and I can cut and paste out of yeah, all any the of them. into my note windows. That's right. Or even if you've got Microsoft Word or some other word processing program open on your computer. It'll be hidden by your screen right now, but you can even copy anything out of here, move over to Word, and paste it in. And so you can do that as easily. To navigate uh, through the, the Bible to get to the passages you want, you can either go uh, and use this feature here. This is something else I have turned off, by the way, uh, where you can actually navigate through the Bible very quickly just using this, but I like 
to close that and I actually go up to this little window here and so then I can go type in you know John 3 16 and it is instantly there another great feature of of eSword is how fast it is it gets where you want to go very fast now uh, you don't have to type out all of John. You just have to type, I think, usually the, at least the first three letters of any book. So like if you want to go to 1 Samuel 1.1, 1, 1, then you would type 1 S-A-M 1, and that's the chapter. You don't even have to type the colon 1. It'll just take you there. In fact, I can show you that. Just uh, 1 Sam 1, and there we are, 1 Samuel 1.1. 1, 1. If you want to... Uh, if you've got several different passages you're studying, you can see the little gold, funny-looking things down the middle here. These are actually uh, kind of like ribbons. Those are supposed to represent gold ribbons in your Bible, and you can link each one of those to certain passages or books that maybe you want to mark where you are on Sunday morning and where you are on Wednesday night and where you are in your daily devotional. You can put marks for each one of those so you can just click on it and it will take you immediately there without you even having to type anything. So it's got a, a little feature for that. Okay. As I told you, you, when you first install it, you're probably only going to have like one Bible that actually is installed and one commentary or two and, and one dictionary, just enough to sort of see it. Well, how do you add more of them? Up at the top, he has a thing called Download. And you, when you click on download, you'll see it says Bibles, commentaries, dictionaries, devotions, graphics, reference books. The, each of these, like Bibles, will then take you to a list of other Bibles that are available that you can install into eSword. Uh, he has a few of them that are paid because the publishers of those particular translations require him to pay for them but many of them are free. Like you can see some of these here where it says download. If I wanted to install these, the Bible in basic English, the contemporary English version, the Douay Reims Bible with uh, Apocrypha, or the, what the Catholics call it, Deuterocanon, uh, which means the Apocrypha, but, uh, and so forth. All of these are available. The ones that are in black are the ones I've already installed, and so they're, that just lets me know they uh, have already been installed. But uh, if I want to install others, I can. And to install one, I'll just click on God's Word or Good News Translation. You know, the Good News came out, what, in the late 50s, early 60s by the American Bible Society, very popular. Uh, as soon as I clicked on it there, down here, it put it into my file list of things I'm going to install. Well, while I'm at it, let's go up to the top and click on Commentaries. Maybe there's another commentary I want to install. Like here's Expositions of Holy Scripture by Alexander McLaren. I remember uh, back when I was in college, there were a lot of our professors who used that. So I click on that. It adds it to the list. How about any dictionaries I haven't already installed? <laughs> uh, well, I can always put in the King James Concordance, so I'll stick that in. And you can see we have three things there that it's ready to install. I just come up to download and say start. You'll see a green line going across the bottom there. It's installing them into eSword right now. They're installed. Yes? Does it indicate in the list there if one is, has to be paid for? Or yes. I'll, I'll now scroll on down and show you the, the for pay ones. Okay. You need to realize this list is much longer than what's showing on the screen here. In fact, I can enlarge it here to make up a little bit. You see the ones that say purchase? You can read that over here. These, like the Amplified Bible, is available. Uh, the, uh, the New American Standard Bible, which I've purchased. That's why it says installed already, because I paid for it. Uh, Holman Christian Standard Bible. Uh, yeah, you can buy all these others. And when you click on one of these, it will take you to the website of the company that owns that translation, let you pay for it, and then bring you back here to install it. And uh, once you buy it once, it's yours forever. I bought the New American Standard Version in 2003. 
And Every, you get a code on that, so like you install it on this yeah. PC, and then later on you install it in your... Right, that's what happens. That's how they protect you from after you download it to make a copy of it and give to all your friends. Uh, they actually assign a code to it. And so even if I've lost my code, all I have to do is go back to the Lockman Foundation that owns it, log into their website, and they have a section on downloadable software. Click on it, and it says eSword. And it says, who are you? And I type in how I told them who I was to start with because I haven't had a gender change operation or anything. So, uh, and they say, okay, here, here's what you've bought from us, and here's the code. And so I can load it all over again, even if I lost it. And that's true. That's all the publishers work that way. So you can always reload it for a new computer. Yes. Uh -huh. But yeah, you can and give your code to a friend. No? Yes, they, they trust. If you're using Bible software, they hope you're somewhat honest. Yeah. Okay. You could give your code to a friend and they could download it and they would have no way of knowing that or preventing it. But they are just trusting that you don't do that. And I urge you not to do yeah. that. Right. <laughs> and, I w and I would hope you would not take ours and give it away yeah. to someone else right. either. But you can load it on all your devices. Yes, but you have the right to load it on all your devices in perpetuity. That is, for as long as they stay in business or eSword is in business, you should be able to keep on using it. And they, they even go further than that because eSword is also now available on the Mac and on the iPad and on the iPhone. And I understand they're even working on an Android tablet version of it. Uh, if you have any of those other devices that are other platforms, once you've bought it just on any one platform, it's available for free on all the others. So if you bought Vines Expository Dictionary, and like I did, and it's in your eSword package, then once I got the Mac version, all I had to do is go tell it I had, that, that I've already bought Vines Expository Dictionary, and like Ron asked, I gave it the code that I had for that, and it automatically installed it on the Mac version. And I have it there now, too. And the same would be true of our product. If you... Uh, once we release a Mac version, if you already have been using it on Windows, then uh, you can come back to our website, enter your information about who you are that when you first bought that from us, and it will automatically recognize that the Mac version is yours free, and you can just download it and install it into the Mac version or onto your iPad once we figure out how to tell you to do that. So that's this is... This is one way you install software into eSword. And, and a great large number of their resources, Bibles, commentaries, and dictionaries are free, including many foreign language Bibles and whatever foreign language other resources like commentaries and dictionaries he could find publishers who would give him permission to include in here. And even a step further than that, you can go back to the main program itself, and I'm not going to... Uh, do that. It's just reminding that once you install a new product, you need to close down eSword, start it back up. So I won't do that. But you can actually go into eSword and tell it, well, I want all my menus and everything to be in Spanish, not English. And suddenly, it will all the words will be in Spanish, or French, or German, or Italian, or ever how many? I think seven, somewhere between seven and ten languages. <laughs> Uh, their goal is 20, I think, languages to make the interface be in. So that's really great for some of our international students or even those who aren't students of ours at all but just students of the Bible who discover eSword. They can use it in their native language. Do you have push and, updates or do you have to go out and get them? Uh, when an update comes out for eSword, uh, you usually will get a little pop-up while you're using eSword that says an update is available. Would you like to install it? And, uh, and then you can, if you wish, or just delay it until next time, and they'll tell you next time again that it's available.